most important thing to consider when assessing behavior. There are four in total. We have automatic, also known as sensory, which we'll talk about. Automatic and sensory, same thing. Typically now you're going to hear more people say sensory, but it still means the exact same thing. And that just means the reinforcement occurs internally. It's alone or you're solo. Escape avoidance, you're preventing or removing an aversive. Tangible, you're gaining an item. And then attention, social attention, you're gaining social attention. So let's start there. Social attention, perhaps the most common type of function for behavior. You're gaining attention from others. That could be teachers, could be peers, could be siblings, could be parents. Social attention is maintaining or increasing the behavior. Now, that attention can be positive or negative. Praise, a good job, a smile is attention. But then you can have negative attention, reprimands, threats. Both function as attention. Behaviors gain attention, initiate an interaction, or act as a response to someone else. Very easy to inadvertently reinforce behavior that is attention maintained. So when you are working directly with a learner, you have to be careful about what level of attention you're giving and for what behaviors. Attention can be a very powerful reinforcer, and we can use that to our advantage, but it can also be a detriment if you're giving attention to the wrong things. Even inadvertent attention, a quick glance, a quick look, still can qualify as attention. So be very aware of what you're doing and how you're reacting to any behavior, positive or negative. So which of the following actions could be considered social attention that could possibly maintain a behavior? A, turning your head towards a client who's engaged in crying behavior. Absolutely. I've had many clients who obviously will be engaging in behavior and looking directly at their technician. And even if we're not giving verbal attention, eye contact, if you even turn your head towards them, to them, it feels like attention. B, telling a student, if you do that again, I will send you to detention. So a threat, still attention from the teacher. C, offering a hug after someone trips and falls. Again, we're giving attention. Would you like a hug? Are you okay? A, B, and C all can possibly maintain behavior. It's all, all three are aspects of social attention. Again, we have to be very aware of how we're responding to behavior. Attention comes in many shapes, forms, and sizes. Next, a tangible behavior gains an item, probably the most easy to understand. Don't get attention and tangible confused. Attention is attention. Tangible is a physical thing you can touch. It's stuff, right? You're gaining an item. Items can include any sort of tangible food, toys, clothes, video games, etc. Behaviors gain access to reinforcing materials. Meaning, in response to a behavior, the consequence is access to some sort of tangible. Think of the behaviors that children engage in to obtain an iPad. Arguably, I wouldn't even say arguably, it's got to be the most common tangible these days that evoke these type of behaviors. If you forget what tangible is, just think iPad, right? Think of all the behaviors you've seen in order to get iPad. A kid throws a tantrum, so you hand them the iPad. They gain that tangible, maintaining the behavior. So which of the following would not be considered a tangible? A, a toy truck. Can you hold a toy truck? Yes. You can feel it in your hands. You can hold it. It is tangible. B, a mother's soothing voice. Soothing voice, can you hold it? Is it an item? Is it a physical thing? It's not. A mother's soothing voice would be more along the lines of attention. C, a plate of cookies. Can you hold the plate of cookies? Can you eat the plate of cookies? Yes, can you can exchange the plate of cookies, right? It's a tangible item. It's, it's a thing. And D, a new video game. Of course, again, think iPad when you think Tangible, because it's really the most common form of tangible these days, right? Video games, iPads, all these type of things. Don't confuse it with attention. Escape avoidance. So escape and avoidance are very commonly used interchangeably, especially in practice. But there is a difference, and we want to understand the difference, okay? So escape, you're actually removing or getting away from a stimuli that has been presented. For example... If I've already put the worksheet on the person's desk 
and told them to start, and they're sitting there in front of it. If they try to engage in behavior to get out of it, that's escape. Avoidance would be you know you have a test at 11 a.m., and so at 10.59, you ask to go to the bathroom. The stimuli, the aversive that you're trying to avoid has not yet been presented, but you're trying to avoid it. It's more important for BCBAs to understand the difference, but even as RBTs, just get used to knowing there is a difference between escape and avoidance. So if you see it on the exam, you understand that difference. Again, escape, the aversive is already present. We're getting rid of it. Avoidance, we're preventing the presentation of the aversive. So always think negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement is associated with escape avoidance, and it makes sense. If I'm removing something, and that's leading to an increase in behavior, it's negative reinforcement. So when you think escape avoidance, think negative reinforcement. Cooper, Heron, and Heward, our white book, says these behaviors effectively terminate or postpone aversive events. So termination would be escape. Postponement would be avoidance. So James always has to take a shower at 7 p.m., but he hates having to do that. He sets an alarm for 7 p.m. and then hides under the table. What is most likely the function of hiding? So think about this. Is James avoiding the shower or is he escaping the shower? Well, you have to ask yourself, has the shower been presented? Is James in the shower? Is the shower presented to him already? Or is he just avoiding the situation altogether? Well, he's trying to avoid it, right? Because he knows at 7 p.m. he's going to have to take a shower. So instead of doing that, he hides under the table once 7 p.m. hits. So is he escaping, avoiding attention or tangible? He's not doing it for attention. Okay, Nothing indicates it's for the attention. If anything, he's running away from the shower. He's not gaining a tangible. He's not gaining any item. He's avoiding having to take the shower. Now, I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the difference. Again, in practice, they're typically used interchangeably. For your exam, make sure you understand there is a difference. Okay, Unlike sensory and automatic, which are also used interchangeably, sensory and automatic mean the same thing. Escape avoidance, interchangeably, but they don't mean the same thing. And then finally, automatic sensory. Again, they mean the same thing, okay? Get familiar with seeing both terms used. On the exam, especially BCBA, you might see automatic because automatic is the technical term. Now, it's been more commonly referred to as sensory these days, but it still means the exact same thing. Something internally is maintaining behavior. So think alone. Okay, this is happening when someone does not need another person to mediate the reinforcer. We have socially mediated reinforcement. Socially mediated reinforcement are our first three. Tangible, escape, and attention are socially mediated. Automatic is not a social reinforcing activity. It's just one person internally reinforcing themselves. Reinforcement does not depend on a second person. Most commonly identified as self-stimulatory behaviors. SSBs, right? Think about all our stimming behaviors. No, Nobody is delivering reinforcement for those. It's all internal. Okay, So if you are being reinforced and nobody's around to deliver the reinforcement, it's considered an automatic or sensory behavior. So which of the following behaviors would be considered automatic? A, biting your nails when nervous. Is this automatic? Yes, because think about the person being alone, biting their nails. What happens? It forms a habit. Why? Because biting them is reinforcing. It's automatic, also known as sensory. B, getting a cast for a broken arm. Well, breaking the arm might be automatic. You might not need somebody. But getting a cast is going to involve your parents driving you, you driving yourself, going to the doctor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Getting a cast is a very social intervention. And then reading a book. So reading a book could be considered automatic you're reading alone to yourself, it's going to be automatic, right? There's nobody else with you. Your reinforcement does not depend on that second person. So which of the following could be considered automatic? It's going to be D, both A and C. Okay, quick wrap up. Again, the most important thing to consider when assessing behaviors. As an RBT, if a new behavior occurs, first thing you need to ask yourself is, why do I think this is occurring? Okay, what was the antecedents? What was the consequences? Why is this occurring? Four functions, automatic sensory, alone or solo. You don't need a second person. 
The next three are all socially mediated, so escape avoidance, prevent or remove an aversive, understand the difference. Tangible, gain an item, a physical thing, gain some stuff, right? And then attention, social attention, you're gaining social attention. Functions, not too difficult, very straightforward. Once you learn them, you'll never forget them, but you have to do the work and you have to understand them before you can get to anything else. These are our fundamentals.